And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. Today it's what is today? Today is today is Tuesday. It's a beautiful Tuesday little morning here. It is May 3rd and um, we'll be celebrating my daughter's birthday this evening. So excited. 16. What do you know? Driving a car, getting big. Anyways, that's not why you guys came here, but I hope you all have a great Tuesday. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Bitcoin's price targets, some of the top altcoins, whether we're bullish or bearish on this market. And um, by the way, don't forget to hit the like button, help out the channel. And I would say this, today's going to be a bit of a sideways market, um, you know, uh, more hinged upon the Fed meeting, which is coming up tomorrow. Uh, today, they're going over the labor numbers. Tomorrow, the interest rate hike. And um, I would say a big move is hinged upon this Fed meeting tomorrow. So today, I'll go over Bitcoin's price range, some of the active trade setups that I've been looking at, and uh, one that I've been trading to the downside. And I just want to explain a little bit about how I'm trading this asset, also known as ApeCoin. So starting off with Bitcoin's price action, um, we are caught in a range on the shorter term time frame range here, which is going to be between uh, 38,000 to the downside and 41,000 to the upside. And I do believe a break of this range will get us the next kind of major uh, move, even on a shorter term time frame. Uh, I would lower this down to um, 37.6, and that very likely uh, begets our continuation down to about 35,000. Um, with a small bounce and probably heading down to 34,000 over some time. Um, and then back to the upside, if we can make 41,000 to the upside on the four hour, very likely we're going to head back up to 43. And if that breaks, I'd say we'd probably uh, reach back up to about 47 to 48,000. Um, and, you know, on the daily time frame, if we want to take a look and see, okay, where would we call this a official bull trap or excuse me bear trap bear traps are going to be above 44 or 5 that same pivot that was our last breakout and if we can get a daily closure back above 44 or 5 i.e the fed tomorrow comes out and says oh we're not going to raise rates um you know a half a point we're only going to raise them a quarter point then i think that would bode well for uh crypto assets in general the dollar would probably cool off a little bit and um other than that you know, I, I, could have, I could be wrong. I was wrong about NASDAQ yesterday uh, saying, you know, and I still am looking for further continuation to the downside. We're getting a small bounce first. Uh, small bounce first and probably heads up to, you know, this uh, 13,300 on the daily. But, um, you know, we did break the range to the downside pretty nastily. We had a pretty abysmal weekly closure um, and then the monthly also closed on NASDAQ, very bearish. I mean, very, very bearish. So I would not be surprised based on this monthly closure over the next month or two for NASDAQ to come down to, uh, you know, 11, about 11,000 bucks. That's being a little aggressive, you know, definitely uh 12, two. And then we'll see how bad it gets with the fed rate interest rate hikes. If he does five half a basis point rate hikes over the summer, I do believe that would coincide with uh, some quite bearish activity in the stock market, which probably leads into bearish activity on Bitcoin. Um, and here we got the dollar here, um, monthly closure, very bullish, making new all time highs on the monthly, going back to 2017. And I mean, that's bullish, right? On the monthly time frame, on the daily time frame, are we gonna get stifled out at 103, 104. I would say if they raise rates tomorrow, you know, it makes the dollar stronger. Dollar probably heads up more tomorrow uh, with the rate hike. Um, you know, and uh, higher rates is to combat inflation, right? So if we can handle the rate hikes, the economy's healthy enough to handle these rate hikes. And I would say yes, you know, with NASDAQ still at all time highs, basically. I mean, look at this on the monthly, you know, going back. You know, um, the all time high was at 16,000. We're at 13,000. So how big of a correction have we had so far? 23 percent. 
I don't know what they officially call a uh, recession, but I think it is when the stock market crashes more than 20%. And, um, and then you have job growth slowing and uh, GDP contracting. Um, that cooks up for a bit of a recession. Those labor numbers are going to come out today, and they were supposed to come out pretty strong. If they come out weak, that'll be bad. All right, so back on to Bitcoin. And um, really quick here. Back on to Bitcoin on the daily time frame. We did not confirm the bullish divergence we were talking about yesterday, which would have been this here. Uh, we would have had going back from this point here, one, two, three higher lows versus. No, it would have been right here, this point. Excuse me, one, two, three lower lows and one, two, three higher lows. And we needed a daily closure above this wick right here. We didn't quite get that. And now, uh, you know, playing in, playing uh, to the downside off the nine exponentials. So uh, stokes are continuing down and volatility is just taking another leg down. So big move, 20% on the daily, back onto the five day. We've been talking about this for some time. Uh, and we've got five day momentum to the downside. We do have, uh, we just regained the exponential. Again, we want to see this thing get above 20% and stay there for the next 45% move to take place. And again, five day and monthly uh, type, five day and monthly signals take, you know, a five day can take three, four weeks, a month and a half to play out. And a monthly signal can take three to six months to play out. So don't expect those to happen overnight. But uh, again, I would not be surprised to see these wicks get filled in here. I don't know why price likes to fill in the wicks, but uh, it's just something that you tr traditionally will see. Um, so as of right now, um, all chances of hidden bullish divergence on the five day have been taken out. And now we are stuck here. And so what we need to see is, um, Price to make a higher low, RSI to make a lower low in order to get that bullish, hidden bullish divergence. And so does that play with the move down to 33,000? Um, and, um, and then maybe RSI can pop below there and give us our second drive. So we probably need two more drives of hidden bullish divergence on the five day in order for this thing to flip the momentum back to the upside. Um, you know, or just a massive green girthy candle above 43,000, call it, you know, five day above 43,000. And I'd be ready to get bullish on this asset again. But um, yep, that's wrapping it up for Bitcoin. And what else do I want to take a look at here? Um, my eight points, eight points have been treating me rather nicely to the downside. Um, Let's see, the five day closes in two days and nine hours. And this doesn't have a whole lot of price history. So um, again, this is a daily, this is an asset that's only been out for a very short period of time. This is the Board 8 Yacht Club governance token. And a couple things happened. One, they had a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event, which was, I believe, Thursday last week. Um, somewhere around here, they announced, hey, we're going to auction off our land in the metaverse. And we got a big pump up to $27, 29 bucks almost. And then um, the next day or Saturday, I believe that was Thursday, around Saturday, they auctioned off their land. Something went wrong with the auction. And that was right around here, I believe. Uh, something, I don't know, their metaverse froze up and they lost it all. I don't know. But um, something went wrong there, and continuation looks to be coming to the downside. We got another wick here on the daily that, like I said, wicks like to get filled in. And um, let's swing on down to the lower term time frames. And I want to show you what I'm looking at here on the 15 minute. So first thing I will notice on the 15 minute time frame is volatility is declining as we're having a bit of a corrective bounce. So um, Price is trading sideways as volatility is decreasing. And we've got Stokes still to the downside as long as we're closing below 1464 on this next 15 minute closure. 
this is pretty much a bearish candle. Um, so what I suspect, suspect a little bit more downside continuation. Um, I do believe so because this is getting a volatility reset. So when this comes back down to, you know, the low percentiles and then gives a tick up as long as momentum is to the downside and we don't have any hidden bullish divergence, which um, will we right now? That could be two drives. Let's see, going back to here. Yes, that would be one, two, three drives of hidden bullish divergence. So um, how would I confirm that? And that would give us, you know, basically we need to confirm this as a local low. Um, and that's going to be with any kind of a 15 minute closure back above 1478 or 1480. And that should get you a minimum shot up to 1496 at the first target. Second target would be 1510. Um, so that's on the, the 15 minute. The 30 minute is about to close here um, with another bearish candle. Are we closing below the bottom side Trollinger band? Not yet. Momentum is still to the downside and volatility is about to start to decrease. So I am running a bit of a position here that I want to check on and see if I should close it out or leave it open. And um, currently I am an entry pot entered short at 1473 um, and liquidation prices at 1621. And um, we got another six minutes on this one hour candle. So this is a good time to kind of prepare for the hourly closure and see what price is going to do. So starting off with the five minute, um, which the five minute has been um, fighting the good fight of faith here, fighting the good fight of faith, Mr. Five Minute. And uh, volatility has been decreasing from this point as essentially price has been trading sideways. So generally what I would say, so we've seen volatility come down um, and we got a bearish reset. So I would expect that, um, let's see, we got, did we got any bullish divergence, hidden bullish, di bearish divergence, right? So what is bearish divergence? Bearish divergence, price is making higher highs RSI is making lower highs. What is hidden bearish divergence? In a downtrend, the price is making lower highs, but the RSI is making higher highs. So we have a sloop. Price is making lower highs, but the RSI is making higher highs, right? And that will be coming back. I don't know if you consider that a high, but if you do, and sometimes this works in looking for bearish divergence, but that would be one, two, three, four, drives, or if you want to call it from here, one, two, three. And so how would we confirm this as a local high and pretty much an easy way to minimize your risk, right? So if you entered a short right here at 1477 um, and you put a, so let's just mark it off here, a short at the yellow 21 and then put in a a, um, the stop loss somewhere around uh, right above the last wick of the range highs, right? So that would be somewhere around 1486. And, um, and Stokes are crossed to the downside as long as we're closing below, below 1479. So this looks like a good trade setup. We've got the lower highs coming all the way through and volatility will begin to expand here soon. This is on the five minute. So the five minute, again, we were talking about the hourly closure. The next hourly is gonna close here in, um, yeah, about three minutes. So the question is, do I wanna add some to my position here? As the hourly is about to close like this, which this candle is a indecision candle. So momentum is still to the downside. Volatility is just starting to expand. And I would expect, you know, continuation of trend, um, which is to the downside. 
Uh, we are probably going to see a move at least minimum, I would say, to the uh, bottom side of this range, which is coming in at 1425. Um, so, that's what I will do. I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to my position. Um, let's see how the two hour is going to close. The two hour. So this is bearish continuation. We'll cross down below 1474. So we had a nice wick here. Um, do we get some bearish continuation off of this move? I think we will. So my entry price was at pretty much right where we're at right now. So do I want to wait and see if I can get a little bounce here and enter more? I'm not sure. But um, I do believe we are in position for some more downside continuation. Let's take a look at the four hours going to close. That is a bearish candle. You know, did we get a backfill on this guy and um, fill it back up a little bit? Let's see what Bitcoin is doing. So Bitcoin is putting in another lower high here. Um, looks like it's going to keel on over and head down to about 39,600. You got momentum to the downside. Um, we've got a couple drives of, yeah, that would be how many drives? We got one, two, three. Rejecting getting out of the bearish control zone, getting back into the bearish control zone on the four hour with low volatility, making another lower high. I would expect trend continuation to the downside. And, you know, the measure move off of this would be something like that. So right in line with this 2618 coming in at 368. I would say um, that's more likely. And remember, this is a four hour candle, so it takes some time to um, kind of activate itself. But back on ApeCoin really quick, um, I do want to just kind of take a look at this on a four hour time frame as well and see, I mean, this thing, if it breaks here to the downside, really, and this is continuation, that's a continuation on the 30 minute. However, momentum is declining again as we're seeing sideways price action. So getting a bit of a bearish reset. As soon as this volatility ticks up, price is going to go in the direction of the trend. That's what I would suspect. Um, so should we add a little bit more is the question on this five minute. And I would say... Um, if we get a move up to the nine exponential at 1492, that's probably not as realistic to look at, but, um, could we get a little bounce higher up to the green 55? I think it's unlikely, honestly. So do I want to add a little bit right now? Should we add to our position here? So the way I would do that is since I'm selling short, I'd click there 25% and give it a gander here at 1436. Um, the question is, did we have one, two, three drives on the five minute of hidden bullish divergence? So I'm going to go back here and momentum is to the downside. And we will in fact have Going from this point right here, we got one, two, three drives of, let's see, one, two, three. Three gets you to the yellow 21. The second target is going to be right there at, um, but I've seen this pattern play out many times before and I think I'm going to add I'm just going to add here I've seen it happen many times before if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out you have risk management in place that's why okay so we're going to sell short here and see if we can get hit and of course the order doesn't fill so now my order is here zero eight 
filled at the price that I wanted. So of course it's slamming down. I'm gonna cancel the order. I'm gonna re-enter here at 1468, 1469. So, so why did I enter this position? Um, well, based on a few factors. One, Bitcoin looked extremely droopy, right? Two, um, again, easy way to manage risk here. If my hit, my trade would have hit right off the nine or the 21 exponential, very easy to manage risk. I think I hit around here at, what did I hit at? Um, my overall entry price is now 1471. So, not a whole lot of profit yet on a $500,000 trade at 5x leverage. So, you know, you can win big, you can lose some, um, but I expect continuation of trend and in fact us to fill out the wicks at a minimum. Um, and if volatility starts to expand just off the five minute here, you can really see some decent size moves, i.e. the last one that came from right here um, this was a perfect death cross. And in fact, I did trade this one this morning. Um, I did trade this one this morning. And uh, yep, continuation of trend to the downside. Um, when we see, you know, it makes another lower high, just another lower high. So that begets continuation and we should see another lower low. As volatility expands, momentum is to the downside. And we got the bearish divergence playing out that should get us a shot to the bottom side of the range at a minimum here. So how does this bleed on into the hourly time frame? Probably going to fill in this wick right here. Um, and then the 30 minute time frame. The only one that has me a bit concerned because no, we don't have any bullish divergence. We did have a potential right there, but it got rejected. And so now we're looking for hidden bullish divergence. Right? And in order for that to happen, RSI would have to come lower than this low while price makes a higher low. I don't see that happening. So I think the target overall down, down, down. The target is down to about 14.25 based on the 30 minute. Um, let's see if we get anything based off the two hour. You know, if the two hour wants to come, yeah. The two hour could bleed it out here, especially with low volatility, a kind of a, a bearish reset. Again, price has been going sideways since this moment right here, right? Sideways, sideways, sideways. Volatility gets back down very low. And um, shoot, all we need now is momentum to cross to the downside, volatility to tick up. We'll have a two hour signal on our hands and Probably, we probably come down, uh, you know, and revisit this low at some point, 1385. Um, this thing is going to get shafted alongside Bitcoin if Bitcoin plays out some nasty downside. And that's why, you know, I always say I, I'm happy to be bearish. I'm happy to be bearish uh, because you can make money to the downside. Now, this has been a little bit longer of a video. Um, Checking back in on this little live trade. Um, again, risk management's gonna get set somewhere up here above these range wick highs. Um, but, you know, I, I'm expecting a little bit of a downside move here. And that is how trading works. You gotta have, you know, your risk management, your entry point, your exit point. So, where am I looking to exit based off of this five minute trade? I mean, on a five minute, you should exit probably around here, right here at 14.58. But um, I think I'm gonna hold this baby a little bit longer and um, you know, hope that we get a little bit more downside continuation. If we can get a closure below this low, um, let's see what that looks like on trading view on the five minute. And yep, volatility ticking up, momentum down. Bearish divergence playing out. This is a perfect trade setup, guys. This is what I like to see. And, um, you know, just briefly, if we want to do a Fib extension to give us a quick little target off of this move, 
um, we could do like this. From that wick to that high gives us a target down to 1438 with the first stop. Um, boom, look at that. Look at that on stream. Not a bad trade, $6,000 in about five minutes. And do we want to take that profit? Um, and this is part of trading psychology, right? Is this thing going to go lower? Are we going to get another bounce? So I'm looking for divergences here on the five minutes, closing in two minutes and 30 seconds. And yes, if we cannot take out this low here, Right, you're gonna have all these higher lows. And here's what I would say though, is this move is not done yet. Why? Volatility is just beginning to tick up, just beginning to tick up. Momentum is down and bearish divergence playing out here. Um, do we have any hidden bullish divergence? So if we confirm that as a local low, um, first break of the range. So what about on the 15 minute? The 15 minutes got another six minutes left declining volatility. So volatility wants to tick up on this guy. And we will not have any divergences playing out as price is about to make a lower low. Come on, give us another five minutes of downside. If we hit 16.22, I will go ahead and take some profits. Uh, sorry, 14.22, that would be my profit zone. Um, that'll be the profit zone. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for some short-term trading today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you wanna learn more about trading, give us a call. It's not financial advice. We're not a financial advisor. Uh, we've got some tips and tricks that you can add to your portfolio. If you want to learn about uh, how to put crypto in your IRA, give us a call. There's a link in the description below. There's a free investor guide. Um, feel free to you know, post a comment, like and subscribe. Give us all the feedback you want. That's it for today, guys. Wishing you all a blessed and highly favored day. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Take care and we'll be back tomorrow.